For functions of two variables, in addition to using cross sections, we also have learned to use level sets or contours to explore the function. With these level sets, we took the graph z equals f of x comma y, and we set z equal to some constant. And then we plot the points in x and y corresponding to z being equal to that number. So z is equal to 0 when x and y lie on this curve, z is equal to 1 when x and y lie on this curve, and z is equal to 2 when x and y lie on this curve. In this way, we can say, see that the original function is somewhat steep over here. We have numbers on these z's, so we know that this area is down and this area is up. It's steeper over here and shallower over here because values of z uh, are closer together over here and further apart over here. If we're specifically in the case where we're thinking about a function of three variables, we can do something analogous. By setting the function to a constant, so looking for level surfaces, locations in x, y, z space, where f of x, y, z is equal to a constant, we can learn something about the behavior of this function. For example, consider the function f of x comma y comma z is equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared. This is a function that is zero at the origin, which is the smallest value that it's able to reach, and increases away from the origin. Now, we draw level surfaces of the function. The level surface f is equal to 0 is just the point at the origin. The level surface f equals 1 is the sphere 1 is equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared. This is a sphere that's radius 1 uh, from the origin. And here's my attempt to draw a sphere. So this sphere is radius 1 from the origin. And the next level surface that we would look for would be the f equals 2 level surface. The f equals 2 level surface is a sphere of radius square root of 2. So we uh, now attempt to draw that, and it's a little closer to our sphere of radius 1 than our sphere of radius 1 was to the origin. I'll just add some circles. OK, uh, potentially I should have used a different color. I don't think you can really tell the difference between the two different level surfaces. However, inside here is a sphere of radius 1, and out here is a sphere of radius square root of 2. And if we were to keep going, our next level surface would be f equals 3. That would be a sphere of, of radius square root of 3. And then f equals 4, a sphere of uh, radius 2. In this way, by drawing level surfaces of functions of three variables, we're able to get a little bit of a handle on what might be happening it, uh, in that type of function. For example, if this function were the density of the Earth, it doesn't make sense for the density of the Earth, but if it were, then there would be no density in the center, low densities in here, and increasing density as we got towards the surface. In addition to allowing us to think about functions of three variables, this also creates a new way for us to think about functions of two variables. For example, let f of xy be equal to the square root of 1 minus y squared. This function has a corresponding graph in 3 space that's given by the equation z is equal to f of x comma y. I can rearrange this equation by subtracting f of x comma y from each side so that this equation actually becomes z minus f of x comma y is equal to 0. Now on the left hand side I have a function of x, y, and z, and on the right hand side I have a constant. This function of x, y, and z on the left-hand side can be written explicitly as a function of x, y, and z. And then this equation is now the equation for a level surface, specifically the level surface where the function is equal to zero, of this new function. So in that way, I can take a function of two variables, I can find the corresponding graph, the surface that corresponds to representing that function in three space, and I can re-express that surface as a level set of a function of three variables. This just gives me another way to approach this function.